Hey everybody, welcome to the next video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between copy on write and merge on read when it comes to how your row level operations work. So what does this mean? Um, what happens when you update or delete a row? How is that handled by the query engine? In the Apache Iceberg table format, you're going to have two options, copy on write and merge on read. So let's talk a little bit about what these two things mean. So first you have copy on write. And the way copy on write works, which is the default, so generally all your tables are always going to start off with copy on write by default, it generally means that any data file where like even one record gets updated or deleted is going to result in that data file being rewritten. Because again, in, in uh, Iceberg, nothing ever gets edited. You're never editing a file that already existed. So what you'll do is you'll create a new data file. So you'll rewrite all the records that previously existed minus the record that you deleted or with the updated version of the record you updated. Okay, so essentially what happens here is that if before the update we had these five data files and we update one record that's in this data file, after the update, the, the other data files that were untouched, they are still there, but we're no longer using data file three, and so we have a new data file with our updates called data file six, per se, as an example. Okay, so the idea is that we're gonna rewrite that whole file, which can be a little bit slower the reason being is that hey you might have a record or a file with a thousand records but you're only updating one record and now you're rewriting all thousand records to make that one update okay still better than updating a whole partition like back in the hive days but still you know we can maybe do a little bit better if, if speed is an issue and that's where we get to merge on read so merge on read what it does is trying to make the right side faster because how do you make it faster? You do less work. So instead of rewriting all thousand records and making a whole new data file, it's like, let's just keep the data file that we already have, that data file 003, but instead let's create what's called a delete file. So, so instead we create this delete file and this delete file will list the one record that was deleted. If it was multiple records, it would list multiple records. But the idea is that, that what's gonna happen is that that tracks and saying, hey, this record has been deleted. Even though it's inside the, the, the data file 003, the technically don't 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 consider that when you read the file, when you read the table. So what's gonna happen is that when you read the table, it's gonna merge those delete files. So that's the name merge on read. So when it reads the table, it's gonna see that hey, I have data file 003 with 1000 records, but this delete file says one record was deleted, so let me ignore that particular record and there's my data set, okay? So it, there is a cost on the read side. So it does slow down the read because now on the read, you have to make that effort to reconcile all these delete files. But the benefit is you sped up the write. And this is very important when you're doing very frequent writes for like things like streaming, okay? Um, so that's a thing you can do, okay? So you have a choice between these two options when it comes to a Apache Iceberg table. Now, delete files, so if you're doing merge on read and you have those delete files that track what you've deleted, there's two approaches, there's two ways that these delete files can be written um, that have different pros and cons. The first one, which is generally the default, so if you switch to merge on read, it's gonna by default be a position delete. And generally at this point, um, again, this is Q3 2022, uh, you're generally gonna be working with position deletes anytime you're working with merge on read at the current state of support. Um, and what that means is that the actual delete file lists the file and the row number. So basically, if I have a thousand records in a particular file and it's the 10th row that I'm deleting, it'll say, okay, in this file on row 10, that's deleted. Okay, so it'll look something like this. So say, hey, in 001.parquet, we deleted the first record, which would be zero because zero base counting. And then the sixth record, which would be record five, is deleted. And that's how it would track sort of what was deleted. So it's not the record ID, it's the record, like the actual number of what row it's in. Okay, in that file. So that's a position delete. Okay, and because it knows what file it is and it's just ignoring a particular row in the file, it's not going to be that hard to reconcile on the read. So the cost to the reading is still uh, minimal. Um, and you still save time when you write. The difference though is you do have to go through and read the files to delete them. So essentially like how would I know that I'm deleting rows, the, the sixth row in this parquet file? Well um, when we do the right job I have to go read the old file, figure out what row it's in, 
to order to write this delete file. So I am, I'm not as fast as I could be because I'm also, so because even though I'm avoiding a lot of writing, rewriting a whole data file, I'm still having to read that original data file to figure out what row it's on. Now with an equality delete, okay, here we skip the whole reading altogether. So instead of saying, hey, delete this row in this file, we're just gonna say, hey, delete the files with these properties or delete, ignore records with these properties. So in this case, I'm saying, hey, um, I wanna delete any record that has an ID of five, seven, 38, 50, and 90. And basically it doesn't need to read the actual records because those are absolute in the sense that like, that's not gonna change between snapshots. So in that case, um, but the problem is it doesn't know where the record with the ID of five is. It doesn't know where the record with ID seven is. So on the right, when it's writing the delete file, it can write the delete, it can skip directly to writing the delete file. So it doesn't have to rewrite the data files and it doesn't have to read any data files. So it's gonna be even faster on the right side than position deletes. But it's gonna be very expensive on the read side because I might have to scan entire partitions worth of data to figure out, hey, where is this robot? Where is this ID of five? So generally, if you're using a quality deletes, you're gonna to wanna to rewrite those data files fairly frequently, aka compaction, okay? So again, with compaction, whenever we want compaction, which would be the rewrite data files procedure, it's gonna clean all this up. So any delete files will just disappear because it's gonna rewrite any data files that have deleted records in them at during the compaction job. So that way you're not rewriting them during the write job. But again, since this is gonna have a higher cost to read, you're gonna to wanna to compact more frequently when you're using equality deletes. Okay, now how do I set the setting? Like how do I determine whether a particular table is copy on write, merge on read? And the thing is that it's not even a table wide setting. There's actually a different setting depending on whether you want to delete using either approach, to update uh, by either approach, or merge by either approach. So basically if I'm talking about update queries, I would just actually set the setting write.update.mode. If we're talking about delete queries, it's write.delete.mode as a setting. And for merges, it'd be write.merge.mode. Okay, and I could do it when I create the table, I could set these settings. So it could look like this, where basically I add the table properties um, clause and I can specify which settings have what values. Or I can even alter the table after the fact and do an alter table to set those properties later on, okay? So it's not like the table's always gonna be a merge on read table, always um, a copy and write table. It can actually be a mix of both depending on what you prefer and what kind of, what, how, what approach you want depending on the operation. So you get a little bit more granular control here depending on what you're trying to do, which is pretty nice, okay? But again, copy and write, generally it's gonna be when generally write speed is not an issue. So if you're doing like a daily batch, you have the day to write the files, so it's not a big deal um, to rewrite those data files. And the beauty of rewriting the data files is that you're gonna have fast reads. There's no reconciliation that has on reads. Um, it just works. But if you're doing like things like much more like frequent batches, like let's say like batches every five minutes or you're doing streaming, um, you know, then you're gonna want to use position deletes, okay? So that way you can speed up the write because again, you don't have to rewrite entire data files, um, but you're gonna wanna make sure you schedule regular compaction, like do compaction every once in a while. And again, what is the right interval? Just to really get the kind of experiment. So, you know, you, you take, you run a compaction job, you see how long it takes. Um, you see how long do you plan on doing these jobs? So if I plan on doing a batch every five minutes, okay, does it make sense for me to compact every five minutes? Maybe, maybe not. I have to see, okay, if I did run a back-to-back -back compaction job, how long would it take? Okay, so maybe I have, a, it, it batches every five minutes. Uh, but it takes like eight minutes to com to compact. So maybe I run the compaction job instead every like 10 minutes. Okay. Um, you know, or basically what you do, or you might have to, what you may have to do is just do like uh, five minute batches, but then at the last 10 minutes and every hour, you run a compaction job to compact going into the next hour. You know, there's different ways you can figure that out. You just figure out sort of what are the costs of these jobs and determine sort of like, okay, what is, what is the best balance between my, uh, what I'm trying to achieve and, and the cost of keeping things performant. Okay. So that's the deal with merge on read and copy on write. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about tuning your table with 
with the actual individual table properties or other table properties other than the ones we just spoke about. I'll uh, see you all in that video. Have a great day and enjoy.